Let's learn how to write a, a, a NCSAPDL script to solve for a typical beam problem. This one is a very simple example for a cantilever beam with a point load applied to its free end. So let's just see how to write this code in APDL and as we go further we'll expand our uh, the difficulty of the examples. So here on line one I say finish let me make it all caps finish the simulations that we were doing before if anything is still ongoing and then clear database prep 7 initiates or starts pre-processing and then I have to pick the element type Again, this is a very important step in running a simulation in ANSYS. We have to pick the right element type. Then so how do we know which element type to pick? One way is to come to the window, if we're new to ANSYS APDL, and come to preprocessor element type and add edit, click add, and find the category. And we see that we have beam 8, 188 and beam 189 that we could pick, but which one to pick and what is the difference between beam 188 and beam 189. If I go to the help documentation and I find the two beams elements, I see that um, beam 188 is a lower order beam element and I can see from here that in the uh, schematic it has only one node in this end and one node in the other end, whereas beam 189 has a mid node as well. So beam 189 is a higher order element to analyze beams. And the difference between higher order and lower order, for example, 188, 189 here, is that the lower order elements are or have lower accuracy, but they're faster. So they run simulations faster than the higher orders. Higher order element types are slower, but they're more accurate. And it depends on the uh, desired uh, situations in the problem or uh, the available computational resources to pick which element type we want to use for for a problem here I've used element type beam 189 again I could type beam 189 here or just put 189 there and it would select the element type for me I don't need to define a real constant here so I leave it blank and then here is section type beam with rectangular cross-section. So let's go to the section types for a beam. If I find the section type command in the commands list of ANSYS, so command find s and find section type here, I see that beam so the first thing in section type or sec t is to define a reference number which I've defined one there and then second is the type and a beam can have several types for example here beam I can have rectangular um, quadrilateral I can also have I-shaped sections and each one will have its own features which will define with section data so I picked section type reference number one type beam and subtype rectangular and then in section data which is here if I find the beams which is up there for each subcategories of a beam cross section I have to give different parameters so section data has up to 12 values which which are separated by commas there for a rectangular beam cross section I need to give only four values maximum and two of them are necessary the width and the height so I have given 0 0.05 0 0.005 so I've defined a um, five centimeter squared cross-section or actually 25 um, cross-section uh, centimeter squared cross-section 
for the beam for the beam so depending on the subcategory of beams you can pick the appropriate inputs in section data and give them as inputs of the section data command. So the next thing I have put there is five and five, which is the number of cells along the width and height. You don't really need to apply those. Um, they have a default value by two, but I've given five for more accuracy. Then I'm defining the material properties here. So Young's modulus is 49 gigapascals and Poisson ratio is uh, 0.27 for aluminum. Now for beams, this is the first time that we're creating a solid element, which is basically we create solid elements with key points, lines, and then areas and volumes as per requirements of our modeling. Here I'm defining two key points, basically at the two ends of my cantilever beam. So if I find the K command here, which is very simple, it creates key points. The first one is the reference number, and the next three uh, inputs are the X, Y, Z coordinates of the key point. If I don't give any values, it would by default be zero, but if I give zero here, it would create key point one, key point one at x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero. Now key point two, just copy this, would be created at key point or location x1, y0, z0. And L command creates a line between two key points. So if I find L, it's P1, P2 are the key points and the other inputs are optional. So let me just write this. Create a line between KP1 and KP2, which is key point one and key point two. Now, after we create a solid model using key points and lines, very simple, just one line with two key points, it's time to mesh. And meshing or discretizing a solid model is done to discretize this model into a, a finite element model, which is composed of only nodes and elements. First, we set the element type to one, which was beam 189. So reference number was one and the element type one was 189. And real constant one, which doesn't have any values material properties let me change this material properties to material model one which is defined in here so I have MPEX again you can find the command MP in the help documentation OP MP and you can give EX for Young's modulus here and PRXY for Poisson ratio that I've given up there and then sect or SEC1 is for section type 1 we define a section type 1 here as a beam element so we activate that and E size divides or determines the length of my elements so if I find E size in here, it de determines the size of the elements or line divisions. So set line division to 
0.05 and because I have a one meter long line and I'm dividing it by 0 0.05 um, so it will create uh, 20 points or 20 divisions along the length and then L mesh is short for line mesh that meshes the line and that's where the nodes and elements are created so I can define or I can give the number of lines that I want to mesh so mesh the line so basically create nodes and elements and after that I have to apply the fixed boundary condition at the fixed end of the beam so apply fixed boundary condition using the D command so I pick D and then I use D node and then in parentheses I give the X Y and Z coordinates of the node that I want so this one would pick node at location 0 0 0 which is there and then by using the F command apply a minus thousand Newton force in Y direction at the node one zero zero so basically F which is short for force at a node needs a node which I have picked using this command node in parentheses X Y and Z F Y is what kind of force I want to apply which I apply F Y and minus thousand is the value the next thing is just going to solution so start solution and then set analysis type to static so I'll we'll cover analysis types later with harmonic model or modal and transient but let me just show you what that does it specifies the analysis type and restarts the status so we, we can have static analysis which is uh, one of the simplest analysis you could do it's not transient then buckling modal harmonic transient some of the analysis that you could do uh, and then we say solve so having done this I can input these commands in ANSYS let's go step by step let's create or input this portion first and let's see what happens First it's asking me if I want to clear and I say yes and I don't see anything happening but if I come to the elements I see that my element type is selected for me if I come to sections under beams um, plot sections I see that my beam is also select, uh, selected for me the beam cross-section the material model one with the values that I was had given is uh, created for me. Next, I create key points and the lines. So key point one and key point two and a line is created for me. Then I'll have to mesh. So I'll copy those lines and put that in here. So if I come to plot nodes. I see that I have 20 nodes or 21 nodes probably um, picked for me or created for me. I can come to numbering and do nodes and I can see that my nodes are created. Actually because it's a higher order and has mid nodes as well I have more than 20 nodes. I have about 41 nodes here. Let me turn off the node numbering and do E plot, which is mean, which means plot elements. Now I want to apply the boundary conditions and finish the pre-processing. So, using the commands that I give, gave there, fixed boundary conditions applied here, and the force is applied at this end. 
and then I can solve this problem. Solution is done very quickly because it didn't have many nodes. I can come to general post processing and list nodal solutions or let's go to reaction forces first. And I can see that Fy is a thousand Newton and Mz is also a thousand because it was a thousand and it was one meters or one meter. And I can um, plot the nodal displacements in the y direction. One thing about beams is that if I come to plot controls and style and go to size and shapes and enable E shape, it shows me the beam and its actual format as it sees. So we solved a very su simple cantilever beam in ANSYS to get familiar with uh, some of the codings in APDL. Uh, we'll get more examples done as we proceed in the course.